My father, John, is my greatest role model, my healer, my coach, my mentor, and all around peace. And he wouldn't tell you, and if I didn't, he's actually my step parent. While some people despise their step parent and don't have a good relation or a fond relationship, I didn't have that experience. Though we're not connected by blood, John's role as a step parent and a stepfather is just merely that, just a title. John's a true friend and a light to anybody who is ever fortunate to meet him. His understanding, compassion, and humor and overall impact on mine and my family's lives couldn't be compared to any other step parent or stepfather or mother that I have ever met. I'm positive there's other ones out there. I just haven't had the pleasure of meeting them or hearing nice stories. The memories I have growing up are a consistent reminder of a man who raised me to be the woman and man because sometimes we have to play both parents. He came into my life when I was five years old and although my biological father was still in my life at that time, it was only when it was convenient for him. I can remember on my 10th birthday, my biological father had taken me out for ice cream. And when we came home and he dropped me off back at my mom's house, he had told John that he wanted him to adopt me. He stood, John stood up and told him, I absolutely will. That point in my young life is when I knew he was the greatest man alive. John's understanding and compassion and is full of unwavering support, which defined the bridge between the two worlds of parent and step-parent. Through turmoil and family complexities, he navigated with grace and compassion and always put my mother's and my well-being far above his own. He was the type of person that if he had a rough day at work or I had a rough day at school, he would say, hey, let's go to the movies, but don't tell mom. Or if I was in trouble or I was grounded, but a new movie came out, we would go see that movie, but don't tell mom. We only, we lived in a very small town called Idlewild, which is actually where they still live. It only played one movie, so occasionally we would see a movie twice. He worked full time, yet still had a spotless house. All the laundry was washed and folded. Dishes were done and a hot meal was on the table ready for my mom when she got home from work. The only thing he wouldn't do was vacuum. At 16 years old, I had my first child who I named after him. Three months later, I became a single parent and he once again stepped up and took the parenting role of another child that wasn't his, but not one complaint or adver adversity. At that point, I was working full time and going to school. When I would get home, once again, the house was spotless and hot food was on the table. He would actually take baby John and go and spend time with him and bond with him so that my mother and I could eat a hot meal and I could get homework done. At two years old, my life did get a little difficult with choices and my mother and father actually adopted him. Once again, he took on a full entirety of parenting of a child that wasn't his and again without complaint. My dad's character has left and is still currently leaving an incredible mark in my life. His sense of humor, his kindness, and his strength are contagious. His belief in love and acceptance is a lesson and taught me that family and love extend beyond a bloodline. His impact goes far beyond the immediate family. His, he's influenced my upbringing among influenced the small town and the people that know, and everybody knows his name even just a minor positive impact that he's had on this community. Everyone's called him Mr. Fix-It. If it was wood or metal and it broke, they knew to call him. He makes custom canes and screen doors. Many people still have the canes and the screen doors that are still in use and use them regularly. The memories I share between family outings or just us will forever be cherished. My parents got married when I was eight years old and I can remember asking, during the rehearsal, when am I allowed to call him dad? Can I call him dad yet? And everyone told me not yet. After the wedding and at the reception, he came up to do a father-daughter dance and whispered in my ear, you can call me dad now. 
The laughter shared and eating dinner in front of a TV and staying up late just to talk about everything or nothing at all. My dad is a manly man who may have known how to fix or craft or anything. Just fix it. Yet he would cry at sad parts in movies. But he would blame it on fireplace smoke or dust floating in the air. He would never admit to it. He would tell stories about him being in the Air Force or make up silly stories just to hear somebody laugh. When my firstborn turned a year old, he started making these things that he called breakfast bottles. And he would cut up fresh fruit and he would blend it in a blender for him and feed him his morning bottle so that I could get ready for work and school. He was always such a goofy person whose goal was to always make somebody laugh or smile or just help them. I can count on one hand how many times I've actually seen him mad. He's the most gentle, understanding, and patient person I have ever met. Though we're not related by blood, a bond that can never be broken. He is unfortunately mainly bed bound now. And I live two hours away and I, I should visit more often than I actually do. Through his understanding and compassion and amazing memories we share, even if he can't remember some anymore. He's the greatest man I have ever had the pleasure to share my life with. Your essence as a person helped me to thrive to do better every day, and those memories will forever be etched in my brain. Thank you for being an amazing father and grandfather to my children.